Myeloma is an immune cell that's floating in the bone marrow making a protein that's causing you problems. And it will help if we start with the basics. So this is a really great picture of a bone, and inside this bone, our blood maker stem cells, called hematopoietic stem cells, make our different blood cells. And they can't make hair or babies or lungs or anything like that. All they know how to do is make blood cells. You've got three main types of blood cells. You've got sticky cells that keep you from bleeding when you get cut. Those are called your platelets. You have red blood cells, and those are the ones that carry oxygen around your body. And when your doctor talks about your red blood cells, or if you need a blood transfusion, we don't say, oh, your red blood cells. We say your hemoglobin or hematocrit, because your hemoglobin is what actually carries the oxygen. And then you have your white blood cells, and that's your immune system. So your immune system in your body is like homeland security. Its job is to keep foreign invaders out. And you know how in the military we have different soldiers that do different jobs? That's the exact same thing that happens in your immune system you have different kinds of white blood cells that do different jobs. So we're gonna break them down. And instead of army, navy, we'll go with two groups called myeloid and lymphoid. And the one cell I really want you to know about in your treatment is your marine. And we call it your neutrophil. He's like the front line of attack against infections. He's the guy that stormed the beaches of Normandy. He's your protective line. So if you don't have neutrophil white blood cells sitting there, then you're kind of a sitting duck for an infection. So what you'll see on your own blood count is your total number of white blood cells. And in this example, we'll use 10,000. And then down below, there's a breakdown of the different types of white blood cells, and they'll give you a percent. So let's say that your neutrophils are at 50%. Well, 50% of 10,000 is 5,000. And we call that number your absolute neutrophil count, or ANC. And when that number's at 500 or less, it's like not having an army and no protection. With your treatment, we're constantly watching that number because sometimes we can take that number down to zero and we want to adjust your treatment or put you on antibiotics to help protect you from infection when that happens. Now over here, you have lymphocytes. And for the most part, that means your T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes are like your general. That's the guy who knows what's going on. He's seen the different enemies before. He knows how to mobilize the troops right away. Oh, you make this or you do that. And he talks to the colonels and then those are your B lymphocytes. And they say, okay, great. I'll talk to you and I'll help you out. Or they say, the heck with this, I'm out. I'm getting out of the military and work for a military supplier. And when they do that, the B lymphocytes turn into plasma cells and that's in myeloma where you have a problem. That's what myeloma is. So it's a cancer of the military supplier. When we look at a plasma cell underneath the microscope, it looks like a little fried egg and it makes little antibody proteins. The job of these immune proteins is to recognize specific infections. That's an infection right there and it sticks to it and it breaks it down so that you don't get sick. And that's what should be happening. You want a lot of different kinds of plasma cells because you want to make a lot of different kinds of antibodies to fight off a lot of different kinds of infections. But the problem is in myeloma, you just kept making the same plasma cell over and over and over again. When they looked inside your bones and did the biopsy, you should have about 5% or less of different kinds of plasma cells. And you had 50% or more of the same plasma cells over and over and over again. You don't really want to sticking a needle in your bone every month to see how well your treatment's working and see how many plasma cells are in there. You don't want a bone marrow biopsy every month either. Wouldn't it be nice for us to have a gas gauge to follow what's going on inside the gas tank? So the gas tank, that's our bones and how full they are of plasma cells inside the bone marrow. So we need a gas gauge. And what we do is we follow the protein that the plasma cell makes. So proteins, when they're born, are like a big glob and they have to be folded up into a shape in which they work. And antibodies kind of have this Y shape. And antibodies, we also call them immunoglobulins or immune proteins, we abbreviate them using Ig. So there's this part to the antibody which is bigger, so it's heavier. We call it the heavy chain and you make different kinds. We abbreviate those with letters or the basic types. A's, G's, M's, there's tons, but these are kind of the basics. And then you have a little part that sticks on there too that's littler, so it's lighter. And we call that the light chain, and you can make kappas or lambdas. So normally your immune system makes all this stuff up, but what happens if you keep making the same plasma cell over and over and over? So let's say in your labs you made IgG. So we know your IgG, and that should be around 1,200, but your level was 5,000. 
And then what stuck to it was kappa. So that was your light chain that you made. And that level was like a thousand. And normally it should be about 12. And then if we wanna look at the whole big protein all put together, we can do this with a test called an S-PEP, which is basically like a little flap of jello. And we inject your protein into the jello in these little holes. And we sit it in a bath of salt water and electrocute it. And then the protein will move down the jello. There's a classic human pattern to how that should happen, and that's here. But when you have myeloma, you're making that extra big protein, and it goes and it sits all the way at the back, and it spikes up, and it's one type of protein that we call monoclonal. And we have a monoclonal spike or an M spike. This is typically when people say, oh, okay, that's what my labs are. So normally you shouldn't have that. So that normal should be zero. Let's say your level was 3.1 when you had 50% plasma cells in the bone barrel. The gas gauge was reading these different levels for you. And as we treat you, we would like you to see that these levels come down to normal. And so that's what we're going for in your treatment. Now, not everybody with myeloma needs treatment. In some people, we just watch it. But if you have a problem from your myeloma, then we treat you. The problems we can have, we call CRAB. And that's how we remember it because doctors can't remember everything unless we come up with little tricks. So what can happen is these little plasma cells are really good at telling the bones to break itself down and eat itself up and cause like moth holes in the bone. Kind of like the bone turns into Swiss cheese. We call those bone lesions, but those are basically like holes in the bones. So sometimes the myeloma can learn to cluster and make an actual mass, and that is called a plasmacytoma. If you break your bones down too much, the bones are made of calcium, right? Then you release all this calcium into the body and the calcium goes too high and that makes the kidneys sick. It makes you think funny and you get constipated and then you don't make any sense. You're making too much of this protein and the job of our kidney is to filter our blood. If you've got all this extra gunk and the kidney's trying to flush it out, the kidney can actually get stopped up and sick. That's what we call renal failure when the kidneys get sick. Also, those bad plasma cells are really good at telling the body, don't worry about making red blood cells, you don't need them. And your red blood cells go low, and then you get tired. You can't carry oxygen, and we call it being anemic. So those are some of the myeloma problems. What we're trying to figure out is that not everybody who gets diagnosed with myeloma has a problem. What we used to do is we would wait for people to have a problem, and then we would treat them. But if having a problem means that your kidneys failed or you broke your back or something like that, then that's not very good. We're trying to figure out who those people are who don't have active myeloma or what we call smoldering or asymptomatic myeloma. How can we figure out who has the highest risk for something to happen to them within the next year? So that if we treated them now, we can prevent them from having a problem. So that's where a lot of our research is right now in myeloma. We have figured some of that out. If you don't have any problems, but you have 60% plasma cells in the bone marrow, or if we do bigger scans of the bones other than just x-rays like PET CT scans or skeletal MRIs, and we find one spot in the bones on those big studies, then we treat you. Or if this light chain test, if the high one divided by the low one is 100 or greater, then we say, we should also treat you. And so sometimes with patients we say, well, you don't have a myeloma problem right now, but you still need treatment because we think in the next year, your risk is high. And so we're trying to figure out your risk. And there are some studies telling us, especially in the Spanish group, that if we treat those high-risk smolderers, that we can actually help people live longer. And that's not standard of care yet, but now we're starting to do those research studies in the United States to say, should we start to treat these people so that they never develop problems from their myeloma? As we treat your myeloma, that's kind of why you do a transplant. Let's pretend you get diagnosed here. We'll say that's 50% stuff. And you did your first round of therapy and we call that an induction. That's usually about four months of therapy or four cycles. And let's say after four months, oh my gosh, there's wonderful news. The gas gauge is reading zero. Let's do a bone marrow biopsy and see if it's really reading zero. And then we look in the bones and we say, oh my gosh, there is fantastic news. We don't see any myeloma in your bones. The problem is we just went and picked a bunch of weeds in the yard, but the roots are still down there and we just can't see them. So you have trillions and trillions of cells in your bone marrow and we can only look for one in a million. So you still have myeloma cells hiding in there. And if we stop treating you, we're just going to end up right back here. 
What we want to do is beat those weeds down with some weed killer and really spray them because if we get the myeloma down even further, it'll take a lot longer to come back. And if we keep you on treatment while you're at low levels, which we call maintenance treatment, you'll go even longer before your myeloma comes back again. And then during this time, we're just watching the gas gauge. And if the gas gauge goes too high before you get sick, we say, okay, well, let's change your treatment so that we don't get sick again. Myeloma is a disease where you will always have to do some sort of therapy to keep it under control so that you don't have problems. Our goal is to minimize the chance that it's going to cause you problems and hurt you. But also your treatment should be such that you have good quality of life and you're able to do the things you want to do, like go garden and play with your grandkids.